So yeah, I'm, I'm here sort of on behalf of ICSM. I'll explain that a bit in a minute. So I, I thought I should start with uh, what ICSM is. Just a quick show of hands if you've never heard of ICSM before. Uh -oh. <laughs> cool, that means I don't have to explain it too much then. So yeah, the Intergovernmental Committee on Surveying and Mapping, it's, it's the doing body underneath the policy body in Australia to dealing with spatial information, which is ANSLIC. I mean, ICSM does do some policy work, but it's really the sort of functional body that sits beneath ANSLIC. Um, and what does that group do? Well, it does all those things there. It's really about coordinating the approach to how we deal with spatial information in, in Australia. And, and um, certainly it's keeping an eye on the future uh, and also um, helping to deliver the, the, the things we need now. So within ICSM, this is a whole heap of different working groups. So I sit on one of them, which is to do with the spatial positioning or, or positioning group. Um, but there's obviously groups to do with uh, naming, um, elevation, tides mean sea level, um, all the data that you guys get, your fundamental data sets, uh, that's from governments. Uh, this body is about coordinating that effort to provide that uh, and scanning the horizon to make sure it uh, is delivered in the fashion that you need it. So, I said there, the fundamental data sets. The most fundamental, fundamental data set is how we position ourselves. Uh, we wouldn't be doing, we wouldn't be here today unless we, we could take those coordinates that we get out of all these wonderful devices and relay them to our, to our maps. Um, and ICSM is the body that delivers our national data. So you're going to hear me say datum a lot today. Uh, you, in this community, you don't even talk about data, to be honest. You actually talk about coordinate reference systems. That's to do with the way the international standard is developed. But, but it, I talk about data because I come from a surveying background. And, and so it's about how we reference where we are on the planet. Everything is related. Every coordinate is related to a particular datum. So if, if I say data, I'm just think coordinate reference system. Um, so you see there the, the product, the, the point of truth about coordinate reference systems in Australia is the ICSM website. So, and one of the reasons I'm here today is actually because um, as part of rolling out uh, the new da national datum, GDA 2020, um, is I was doing some work for the CRCSI, uh, the Cooperative Research Centre for Spatial Information, and one of the big things that came out about that, rather than the technical side of how we uh, put coordinates into a, into a service, is about the need to raise awareness and knowledge about the importance of this issue and about how things are done, done currently really need to change. Um, and to be honest, I can't do that in a 15 minute or 20 minute time slot. So you'd be pleased to know I'm not actually going to give your geodesy lecture today. Uh, what I'm here to do today is to try and get you to do to do things. I want you to actually take action after I leave. If you want information, go to the website. The website's got the information. It's going to be completely built up. It's been being built up. So I'm not even going to talk about really where we're at with our new data. What I really want to talk about today is what you understand in terms of a couple of uh, common misconceptions in spatial referencing, and that's what WGS84 actually is uh, and the role of uh, an open source library that sits beneath QGIS and, and a lot of other open source platforms, the, the PROJ library, the transformation library or projection library. And starting with this, as I just said, um, to highlight the complexity of this issue, I, I just want to tell an anecdote from 1987, which was my first year at university. Uh, and our lecturer at the time was uh, scratching around the board proving some geodetic theorem about coordination, writing all the equation up. And he got to the point where he said, and so it is obvious that. And then he stopped and just stopped talking to us. We were all sitting in a little tiny room. He went and sat down at the desk and started doing all these calculations. This is pre-mobile phones, so we were all just sitting there looking like stunned mullets, couldn't throw paper planes, the room was too small. Uh, <laughs> so we're just wondering what's going on here. And then he, get, he gets up and said, yeah, it is obvious that. <laughs> and this, this is not an urban myth, he actually did this. And then he said, oh, that's funny. I remember my physics lecturer did that. That's really weird, isn't it? <laughs> so this just highlights that the complexity involved in this issue is something that Cameron talked about. Complexity uh, means that people tend to avoid that issue. So a lot of the work that I've been trying to do and why I'm actually here, the CSESI funding has been paying for me to go in and talk to people about trying to get across the the concepts rather than the technical detail, which is, as I said, that information is available on the website. So, also that year 1987, again, uh, the 
US Defence Mapping Agency, the agency at the time that was responsible for WS84, released a document where it identified WS84, this wonderful uh, GPS coordinate reference system, could be used worldwide for all DOD mapping and charting purposes. So what that meant was they got 83 uh, local or regional or national datums or reference frameworks across the world and they mapped across a single transformation to this WGS84 thing. Uh, it was a great step forward. It meant that they could now, with the GPS, work out where they are whenever they were trying to bomb someone. So the spatial community obviously thought this is a really good idea. And so WGS84, through this point of history, actually became this global referencing system. And the way it's treated in the uh, mapping community is probably, uh, I wanted to use another anecdote here to, to highlight that, that's the concept of the Earth as the third rock from the sun. When we think of the Earth, people think of it as a very solid object. Uh, nothing, nothing on it moves. Um, and that's not actually the case. Plate tectonic theory um, was really only actually accepted widely in 1960 uh, and was shortly about to be able to, every man, person, woman, their dog, their car, is soon going to be able to actually measure how the plate moves and report on it. Um, and to highlight that, I just got another little anecdote I've got here. I've got, if I wanted to coordinate where this frisbee is in this room, I can set up some coordinate axes there, X, Y and Z. Uh, I can put a coordinate on it and then this object is now positioned in the room. So this is basically uh, what WGS84 is. If you think about that coordinate axis is at the centre of the Earth. Uh, here's Australia's tectonic plate. Uh, that coordinate, that relationship is defined so we can relate one coordinate on this plate uh, and it's beautiful, it's all done. Um, but now, of course, if I move this frisbee, Andrew, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Would you now say that that has the same coordinate in the room? No, it's not. And if you hold up, you see Australia's on that frisbee. So this is a, an analogy of Australia is moving around the surface of the earth. Now, you would not say that Frisbee is in the same spot in the room, so why do we say the Australia is in the same spot on the tectonic plate that hasn't changed since 1987? The answer is because we could. <laughs> why, why would we want to go through all the complexity of, of modelling the uh, movement of Australia on the surface of the Earth uh, in this WJS84 system when we didn't have to? Because we haven't been able... Uh, to measure locations uh, that accurately. It was hundreds of metres <coughs> up until fairly recently, and the, certainly the mapping data uh, wasn't that accurate either. I mean, this is a map from 1987 in Tasmania. If, if you wanted to position yourself on this map, you used a six-figure grid reference, which broke it down into 100 metre cells. I mean, in Tasmania, we can do that because we've actually got hills, so we know where we are. If you're out in central Australia, you wouldn't get within 100 metres of this map. I mean, the point about what is actually... <laughs> What has actually changed since 1987 is slowly uh, that the data itself is becoming far more accurate. So you've just seen some examples of that today in QGIS, the use of that 3D modelling uh, with a, the mapillary with the photos. You can uh, get the accuracy down to sub-metre. Um, but what hasn't changed is the way we deal with the transformation or coordinate transformation from local Earth systems to uh, this WGS84 and inverted commas. And it does need to change, just like the people in that photo would have. <laughs> and it's not a family snapshot either. Everyone looked like that in 1987 for those people who weren't born then. So the WGS84 you refer to in the in QGIS, or in basically every GIS software still does it like this, so it's not unique to QGIS. Uh, it, is, it is what I would call the third rock from the sun version, where nothing on earth changes. We've taken a measured a coordinate and related it back to what a GPS uh, coordinate would be and it said nothing's ever moved. Uh, so that, that referencing to that data or that coordinate reference system is only part of the picture. The full picture is actually looks more like that for WGS84, which is only the GPS coordinate reference system. It's not the coordinate reference system used by other uh, genesis S like Galileo or, or GLONASS. So what you see there is the fact that it is, WGS84 is just the name, it's just a brand. And you've got this funny thing, G1762, that's actually the week number that WGS84 since it's defined. So WGS84 is not just a brand, it's also a calendar. 
so that, that identifies it. So in other words, WS84, there's actually seven different versions that have been over the course of time. So when I'm talking about where these axes are in this room, there's only one room corner. But unfortunately, when it comes to measuring the centre of the Earth, we can't get a box tape out and, and get an offset to it. We've got to try and deduce it uh, by some other very clever means. So there's been seven different attempts or, uh, over time to actually come up with better estimates of where that is. So the axes have moved as well as Australia's moved. Uh, and then there's also the point there, the date is included in that unique definition because it's saying that the coordinate was measured uh, in the middle of 2017. So when Australia's moved two metres from where it was in 1994 or 1 1.8 metres, then that coordinate is specifically related to that date. So this is really what we're trying to do with data modernisation is to, to model that change. And that's just an example of what it would look like with what is actually the gold standard uh, coordinate reference system. So um, people say, why don't we use WGS84 well, for our coordinate reference for everything? Well, for a start, we can't access it. There's only one station in Australia inside a military compound. Uh, we can't put coordinates accurately on every feature in the country, especially the ones that have been done by terrestrial means. And WGS84 is actually made to align with this gold standard, which is an open source coordinate reference system maintained by academics, for which the information is all freely available. So, what is the point I wanted to make out of this about WGS84, which is, uh, I'll come to how it's used in QGIS in a minute. Um, you shouldn't be using a WGS84 third rock from the sun coordinate interchangeably with our current national data or coordinate reference system, which is GDA94. Because Australia, just like the Frisbee, has moved two metres since those coordinates were defined. So if I go out and measure uh, a location with my smartphone, which pretty soon we'll be able to do it down to uh, the nearest um, point 0.3 or point 0.4, it'll be recording it in the true WS84 coordinates, uh, not where Australia was in 1994. It's measuring Australia where it is now. So what we've done with data modernisation is actually, first part of that is define a new datum called GDA 2020, or a new coordinate set. And that is the coordinates where, where Australia will actually be on the planet in 2020. So in other words, you can still substitute those coordinates in a dumb fashion, just put them straight in with, with, the, with the GPS coordinate, and, and they will be compatible to a point, to a point of about 0.3 or 0.4 metres is the way it'll work. Eventually what will happen in the second stage of data modernisation is we're releasing this new sort of model that's called the Australian Terrestrial Reference Frame. And really all that is is, the, is including the... the, the the model of the how Australia moves so that you can relate these two coordinates appropriately at any point in time. And when I say you, I mean it'll be the software that you're using. So fundamentally why we use the third rock from the sun version of WS84 at the moment, as I said, is because we can. With this mapping data, it's been able to cope, but it's just about to break that assumption. So at the moment you can't use uh, a reference frame with changing coordinates because it's not in software. It's not in QGIS, it's not in the Proz library at the moment qualify on that in a minute. It's not in any commercially available GIS software. That is the thing that needs to change uh, for us to actually accurately model our location. And that is why we've introduced this first step called GDA 2020, which we can cope with in our, in our current paradigm of how we use coordinates. So I just mentioned the, the projection library. I assume everyone has heard of that library. Um, yeah, I, I guess coming back to something that, that Cameron said before, um, it's underappreciated the complexity, and as I've made an example of, the complexity and of dealing appropriately with transformations and coordinates, it is underappreciated. Uh, and the fact that this uh, library has been maintained by a small, hardy group of dedicated individuals on your behalf is a, is a credit to them. Over a long, it's only a really small group have actually really been working on this stuff, uh, and the fact that it's become so wide, widespread um, through the open source uh, software uh, is a testament to its value. And I'm not going to go into all the history of Pros4, but it is really important in terms of understanding where things are at and where they're going in relation to this. So I really would tell you to take the time to read that, that or see that first uh, presentation by the current. Project Management Committee Chair. It's an excellent presentation. I'm a bit of a geodesy geek, so it might be a bit warped by my view there, but I'm, it does really explain really well, understand how this library came to be and where it's going 
is highlighted in the second talk there, which is really about making that library able to cope with uh, coordinates changing for, from GPS receivers as we measure them in the field, uh, and then getting that back into our map data. So that fundamental library is, is being altered now. I think PROJ is about to become PROJ version 5. Uh, there's a release candidate coming up for that in a month or so. Uh, there's been a power of work done on that, particularly those two bottom guys there in the last uh, 18 months. And yeah, I, I really encourage you to read some of the stuff that's been written there uh, and it'll really increase your understanding and awareness. So that brings me to how Forest 4 currently, uh, and so GDAL and Q just works with uh, transformation. So I actually, I talk about coordinate transformation deliberately. Um, when I first kind of used GIS software, I was trying to do a coordinate transformation from one data to the other. I couldn't find it. I said, projection. I don't want to do a projection. I want to do a transformation. And then I finally realised that, oh, it's all lumped in under that one ambiguous title. And you'll see in a minute that there's a fundamental difference between a, a transformation and a projection um, that is actually quite important. So the way it's done is w, this, the third rock from the sun version of WGS84, where nothing ever changes on the surface of the earth, is used as a hub datum or a pivot. So all other national datums are transformed to it. Now, that's represented in that command, in the, in the arguments there, with the plus two WGS84. So that WGS84 is not the one that has coordinates changing over time, that's the third rock from the sun version. So if I wanted to go from the old Australian datum AGD 66 to GDA 94, uh, I would have to go through uh, that transformation there, which is a seven parameter transformation, three rotations, three translations and a scaling. And then it would take me to GDA 94. And then you see there the magic numbers, which is why I said Australia's moved about 1.8 metres. You can see there, According to that transformation, we haven't moved at all. It's all zeros. Nothing's happening to those coordinates. The software's not doing anything. You, when you take a GDA 94 coordinate uh, and you're trying to relate it to coordinates measured on a GPS receiver, nothing's happening. It's zero, zilch. So that's, that's the problem when we start getting WGS 84 coordinates measured by every device on the planet uh, down to less than 0.3 of a metre when Australia's moved about two metres. And you'll see there, there is actually Australia's new national datum, GDA 2020, is provisionally in QGIS. It came in through GDAL. Uh, you see there, there is no, none, there's no parameters telling GDAL or any of the arguments pulled up what to do to go to this hub datum. So in actual fact, the GDA 2020 that's currently in there doesn't really work. Now the reason why there's no arguments in there is because we haven't put any in the EPSG registry and we haven't told the people what to do about it, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to come to this meeting, because I wanted to meet some Software <laughs> <laughs> You guys oh up the back. <laughs> they don't get off easy. Uh, so I'm just raising that. I mean, it, no doubt, you don't need GDA 2020 at the moment. If you've been following it, which you probably haven't, uh, it's still on hold. It hasn't been officially released. And that is probably going to happen about a year behind schedule in 2018. So there's no need to use GDA 2020 at the moment. The whole point about this is we've got to get this working properly in software so that people can use it. And we really don't need to use GDA 2020 until such time as highly accurate uh, GPS positioning comes online in cheap devices, which still hasn't quite happened yet. So we do have a bit of time to sort this out. So this is where I wanted to highlight the difference between a transformation and a projection. So if you're doing a projection, which is just going from the, from the, uh, the sphere or the ellipsoid to a, a flat map, uh, they're just basically going to give you a unique answer every time. If you've defined what the projection is, uh, the software should always, doesn't matter which software you use, should always really give you the same answer. There'll be issues with rounding and there might be slightly different assumptions being made in the coding, but you're not going to get a 10 metre different answer, it'll be millimetres. On the other hand, a transformation is not unique. We determine the relationship between uh, coordinates on the surface of the earth by an empirical process where we go out and measure coordinate in one system, coordinate in another system, and then work up a model to model that relationship between those known points and then apply it to every other point. So the point I'm making here is the model that's preferred uh, in, in uh, QGIS is under an ICSM recommendation the least preferred transformation to use. 
Now, it doesn't matter with, with mapping data. If you're mapping something at, at 1 to 200,000 or 1 to 10,000, it doesn't matter because the difference you get in an answer between the, the seven different transformations that are available will be in the order of metres. But the point I'm making here is as we move into this new paradigm where everyone is using accurate coordinates and there's accurate data and is using it in real time to make real time decisions, then not being able to actually choose what transformation you make uh, becomes rather critical. And the good news is the portfolio, as I say, is being updated to actually do all that. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly how that'll get into QGIS, although, Niall, I have been following that thread that you've had, which a thread's probably a, not a, doesn't do it justice, it's more of a book. <laughs> <laughs> but as I understand it, this, this is already in motion for QGIS. Would that be a fair statement? So I'm just saying that uh, it is going to happen. Um, and, and basically, when, when the, f the capability in that Project 4 upgrade to actually do full time-dependent transformations, if it gets into QGIS in the near future, it'll be the first GIS package to have it. So it is a, an absolute achievement to do that. Or well, will be an achievement, a fantastic achievement. And a feather in everyone's cap is involved. So, in terms of that issue, that little issue there with the GDA 2020 transformation, um, just be aware that uh, ICSM has funded um, a developer, Alex Leith. You may know Alex. Yeah, so he's been doing some work to do some to do some plugins to actually. One was adapting and adding the functionality to an existing plugin. The other one was actually doing an ICSM branded plugin. So these will will give you some point of truth answers that actually do do our preferred transformations. Um, don't use them yet because they're not fully operational. But I'm just highlighting this to, to this community. It's useful to get that out there. And I'll actually put that in the, in the chat site and also on our GDA 2020 forum. So coming back to my points here, you've all sat there and probably, I'm sure a lot of heads nodding, but I bet no one really understood what I just talked about. <laughs> so I'm making the point, what I want to do now here is leave you with some simple things uh, to take away from what I've just talked about. Obvious, really. <laughs> uh, the first thing is that how we reference our, our coordinates is actually very, very important. Uh, the systems that we have been using have been a practical solution that worked. Um, but it's, it's about to break, not just in QGIS, but generally across web mapping even. I mean, everyone uses this third rock from the sun. That's, that's all that's used in web mapping, full stop. So that that whole system is about to break under the weight of people being able to accurately measure their location anywhere on the planet in real time. So changes are required. That's really it in a nutshell. And changes are actually happening. They're changing, it's happening in every government is concerned about this across the globe. It's happening in this international standards development of working so closely to, to de describe the way that software will university apply it, so this, this project development is actually in advance of that standards in some respect, um, but it's, it's, uh, it is happening at, at a whole of um, not just industry level, but also the government and standards organisations are changing to support this, really a changing paradigm in how we, how we coordinate information. And in terms of, in Australia, uh, I'd, re I'd encourage you to use the ICSM resources as a point of truth. So these resources aren't just the technical mumbo jumbo. There's actually, um, as I said, under the CRCSI project, a lot of effort just going into sort of general education uh, and, a, and awareness. So we do need to raise the knowledge levels about this issue. As data managers, your knowledge levels will have to increase more than uh, someone in the field, possibly. But it's really the core people in this group that are managing data that really need to get up to speed with this. You don't need to learn. Um, spherical trigonometry, but you do need to understand the concepts, the tools will be there to use, uh, the changes that we made, uh, and, and we're really trying to raise awareness as well, um, just so hopefully you can have these intelligent conversations with your managers when you need money to upgrade your software as well, or in QGIS's case, convince your managers to go to it. Probably. <laughs> so that's about that. <laughs> Thank you. 34 seconds if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> or we can play Frisbee. Yeah. <laughs>
It's on a, yeah, so it'd be, it's, at a, it's at a coordinate level, I guess. So, yeah, these are the questions that haven't really been worked out. In terms of the Proj library, it's fairly, got a fairly simple role in it. But, yeah, how it is actually, um, I mean, if you think currently, the coordinate system is attached to the data set, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so that coordinate set, I mean, at the moment it's only been 2D. Soon it's going to be 3D. So the fourth dimension is time. So it'll be... The, the two dimensions plus time, and then the library takes that time as part of the tu coordinate tuple, just like wood elevation to do a digital elevation model, and, and puts it in alignment on an on-the-fly projection, for instance. But the way it's actually structured, yes, that's the, what I don't have the answer for, and that's why the standards work is probably useful in that regard. So do, you, do you think it'll be new data formats for all the supports, as well as the kind of Sorry, say again? No, <laughs> no. It's a simple one-word answer. Um, I mean, that in actual fact, there will be a new transformation format because they're talking about having transformations that currently uh, are mainly done with a, that equation, similarity equation. Um, there's a push on by the big proprietary providers to actually use grids because it's very easy to use exactly the same uh, coordinate set in that instance. So you see there, if you, if you do it, sort of attach it to a data set and just substitute the grid in every time you want to change something rather than changing uh, the fundamental relationship in a coding structure. But in terms of your data formats, in terms of your spatial data, no, I don't see that changing as such. It's just the way the, the coordinate framework is, is referenced underneath that. Yeah, so the, the coordinates that under, like the projection.prj file, the information in that would have the date. So the date becomes part so of the... Kind of, kind of metadata for that? Or, yeah, it's even stronger than metadata. It, it could be metadata. That's one way of doing it. Um, but it could also be that it actually is part of the coordinate. If you think like a 2D or 3D coordinate set is the concept I'm trying to get across there. If 2D, you've only got uh, X and Y or that and long... I mean, when I started work, that was how, if you wanted to do height, the height was an attribute. It was like metadata. But now the height is in, in the coordinate. Yeah. So this is like the time will come into the coordinate as well. But you could use time as, as a, it could just be metadata. So that you could know to tell the system what the date is. But it's probably better if it's actually in, in the coordinate, like 3D. It's always been I mean, there's actually some work going on, quite a bit of work going on looking at the cadastre today uh, at CRCSI. They're trying to figure out how, how to answer those questions. Um, I guess my view on that is um, as long as you know what coordinate reference frame you're in, you can, you can change to another one. I mean, it's the same as an on-the-fly projection change. Or yes, but as long as you can know that relationship... So the, country, the whole country's moving, but so is the GPS. That's the point. So are you talking about fixing coordinates in stone and then just changing how the whole thing moves? No, well, that's two different things there. I think fixing a coordinate, um, you're talking about... The boundary definition. Yeah, so the coordinate, it's only a model of reality, though. The coordinate is only a model. So in, in terms of a legally coordinated cadastre, I don't think we're anywhere near that at the moment anyway, but... Um, the, the point is the coordinate is just a model as measured. So how we deal with that legally, it doesn't matter what... As long as you know the system it's measured it in, you can relate it to any other system. That's the point I'm, I'm getting across there. So the issue of a legal coordinate is, is another thing altogether in terms of you know, the whole structure of the system. But it can be accommodated, just the point. <laughs> The 
So, so WDS 84 is actually measuring time all the time. That's how it works out its position. So that record is a part of it. So if you, if you catch it, so if you're capturing data with a GPS that's like something accuracy, you need the time as well. You can You need the date, yeah. And then you take that into this, um, into the approach for and do your transformation. Yeah, so you can relate it to any other. What we haven't worked out yet, so the good thing about WGS 84, the third rock from the sun version, is it is a static coordinate in time. So there's going to have to be a solution worked out by, web, by, the, by the web mapping providers, by the system, to figure out how we represent that on an, on a, when it is changing all the time. So on a yearly basis, do we just pick the middle of June every year as the, as the common point every year? The point being there um, that you don't actually have to transform all the data over if you're out in the field in real time with a, with a GPS receiver. You only have to transfer over the the position of the GPS receiver is giving it. That's the bit that's missing. Is there a common point in time that you would all, or would it be basically when it, when it is static? It's the, all the coordinates to, to start with, we said to start with moving, by moving to GDA 2020, it's the same as the way GDA, it's just a static point in time. Yep. So that deals with that problem in a, in a short instance. It, it gives us a few years' grace to sort out exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Yep. But in saying that, it, it's, a, it's an issue that. Everyone who provides web mapping, all the big people, all the big boys, all the in-car navigation, they've got this issue to sort out. So there will be an answer, and it's it's going to be a great incentive to standardise it across the globe. So I, that's what, changes are required. We don't have all the answers for that yet. GDA 2020 buys us from time to buys us from time to make the data coincide with the location, and yeah, sometimes it's a bit scary not knowing the answers, but they will be there.